Hi, good evening everybody. Welcome to Blue and Gold Talk, the video on the channel. I just throw random talk out there and talk about just anything that comes in my head, which is what I'm going to do tonight, guys. Listen, I want to apologize. I know I did not do the post game. I did not do the pregame uh, and uh, the, the, everything. I've, I've been missing out videos like crazy, guys. I have a deadline I have to meet by this Saturday. I didn't even change. I didn't even shower and do the video properly because it's either I do it like this or I don't do any video again tonight, okay? So apologize for this. I'll be back at my normal look in a few days. You know, I need, I need another four days, hardcore four days of what this project I'm doing. So guys, let's talk about the season. I want to bring it up. I want to talk about it. Look, it's uh, the way I look at it. We're out of our misery, at least. I, I, I'm the type of guy, I don't give up right to the end. Mathematically, we are out of it now. Uh, we're exactly, uh, if Washington or Detroit get a point, I believe it's Washington or no, or Pittsburgh, whatever it was, it's Washington, uh, Washington, no, Detroit or Pittsburgh, somebody has to win. We're screwed. We're finished. It's done. It's over. So we can't make it even if all, every team loses out there because one of the teams is guaranteed to win. So we're out. We're out for sure. It's mathematically done after game 79. And what a frustrating season, a season that a lot of us had hopes, a lot of us had envisioned a good season. I think that's fair to say. A lot of us envisioned there'd be growth in this team, there'd be a big step forward. And uh, I was one of those, you guys know, I picked them to finish first this year, first or second, I figured this year, I really did. And the truth is, I believe this is a first or second place team, guys. When you look at, the, when you look at this team on paper, this is a team loaded with talent. We had a, a very underachieving Dylan Cousins all year long. Tage only got his step going the last few weeks. This team just had a bad season. It was an off season in so many ways. But the good news, Lukanen took a step forward. That was good. Uh, Levi got some important games in while Lukanen was do, going through his stretch. Levi went through a solid stretch in the AHL. And of course, guys, we got the, the, the playoffs to look forward to with the Amherst. We'll talk about that in future videos. Right now, you know, reflecting on the season, hey, you know, I, I, there's a lot of things that were up and down. I mean, there was many folks here in the channel that, you know, you guys didn't like Clifton too much. I myself, I'm a fan of Clifton. I think that's a, that was a good pickup. Uh, we needed that physical presence, even if he's not the biggest guy. We need, we need guys to start doing this, guys, on this team. The team took a big step forward this year, physical presence, defensive play. Let's not forget that, okay? Let's look at the positives too, not just the negative, because people will look at the glaring thing, which is we missed the playoffs again. I mean, yeah, we did. We did. We had a general manager who sat on his ass and didn't do anything when he should have. That's what happened this year. I blame Adams even more than Granado, actually, guys. I really blame Adams. Adams basically sat on it and didn't do nothing. He moves too often at a snail pace, this guy. As good a GM as I think he is when it comes to slapping together talent and drafting talent and, and getting even a good chemistry in our dressing room, he made vital mistakes. One of them, Ocposo was captain. Guys, I was never a fan of that decision ever, ever, from, right from the start. But I went with it, I'm a fan, I love the team. You know, uh, signing Ocposo to a contract this year, ridiculous. The guy got, he was here for seven years on a deal that he did squat. He had one 20 goal season. He was making 6 million bucks a year. For what? You know, that was a horrible contract. Not, not their fault. You know, that's not their fault. They're not, they're not the ones that signed him to that contract. But still, you know, if we're going to pinpoint, start pinpointing things, we have to start pinpointing mistakes that we continue to make that other GMs made and didn't wash them out and get them out of here. Like, you know, just because Ocposo was a nice guy, that's not a reason to keep him. That's not a reason to keep a guy. Your team's either producing with the players you have or it's not. And last year, after we took all the steps forward, when we missed the playoffs, I kind of was able to live with it because the regulation wins dictated we didn't really deserve to get in over Florida. We just didn't. If you looked at the numbers, they deserved to get in last year. And look, they proved it by getting to the finals, so... But uh, right now, what we, they're going to have to make some decisions going forward, folks. They do. They have to make some huge decisions going forward. My question is, will they make them? This is my question as a fan. Are they going to make these decisions? Or are they just going to sit on their ass again? Because that's not going to work. Okay? We can go with the youth movement. I agree with that. 
but you've got to bring in the proper veterans, okay, to guide these, these. you've got to bring in Stanley Cup champions, but not, don't pay them, like, especially guys that, you know, I, I don't want to overpay, like, guys that are way past their prime, like Kane and stuff, no thanks, no, 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 you got to be smart about it too, but in reality, you know, if you get the right gritty players in here, the team can become a champion anyway. And uh, I believe that, I do. It's, you've got to have the right guys in the dressing room who hate to lose more than anything. And this is um, what I think this team lacks this year. This team, this team sat on a season where the coach really just let them slack for too much, too much of the season. And that's on the coach and the players but it's on the coach because if they're not scared of the coach, they're not going to give 100%, folks, no matter what. So Granado, in my opinion, has to go. We got to get another coach in here that's really firm and won't be their friend. He just won't be their friend off ice. He doesn't care. He's there to do a job for the owner the way he sees it and the general manager. That's his job. He doesn't care about the players liking him. You know, this isn't something I've, I've ever believed in. I don't care how much the players like Granado. I could care less about that. To me, that's a weakness. That's a weakness. But that's just me. That's my opinion. You might have a different one. That's fine too. But my opinion, over the years watching hockey, who was the most hated coach in the 1970s, folks? Scotty Bowman, who coached the greatest team ever assembled. Really, they were. Because the 70s Habs would have wiped out the Oilers. For those of you that didn't see that era... That 70s Habs team was so strong in every area, they could not be beat ever. You just knew they couldn't be beat. They had to lose Scotty Bowman. They had to lose Ken Dryden. They had to lose all these key people that were in the organization before the team even lost. And, you know, when you build up such a culture of winning like that, when you see another team like Edmonton and the Islanders who I think were the second greatest dynasty, when you see teams like that emerge, and I watch the Islanders, and this team reminds me of the New York Islanders. They do. This Buffalo Sabres team. Now look, we haven't done nothing in the playoffs yet. But once we get in, let's say we get in and we start choking up for a few years. You know, another team to watch out for, I hate to say it, Toronto. Toronto this year have taken leaps and bounds becoming more physical. So we'll see what they do come playoff time. We'll see. But I think they did not address the blue line, and I don't think they addressed uh, the goaltending. And I think they needed to, but uh, I could be wrong. They, they, they could have a deep run this year, the Leafs. I, it wouldn't shock me. The only thing that would surprise me is that it's actually the Maple Leafs doing it. You know what I mean? They have such an awful reputation that, um, you know, it would be surprising. And I can't picture a guy like Tavares leading the way. I can picture Matthews for sure. That guy's the best natural goal scorer I've seen probably since Brett Hull. I mean, really, he's that good, this guy. He's really good. So, you know, you look at our, our squad right now, guys. We need some grit. Uh, size we got. But they got to play like they're big. They don't. They don't play like a big team, guys. Look how they played down the stretch. Look what they were doing. How often did we see them in games where... You know, which game was it? I think it was the Ottawa game. Was it the Ottawa game? There was a game I watched. I can't remember which one. It was one they lost at home. They, anyway, they were in this game. And they're letting this other team pass it around. And before you know it, we're down like 2-0 right away in this game. I forget. Off the top of my head, I can't remember. I'm tired. I've been doing long hours with this paint job. But guys, when, when you break it down... There's a lot of issues that weren't, weren't, weren't addressed at all this year. The soft issue. People are saying, well, they might be soft. They are soft. They are soft. They're mentally soft, this team. Guys, you've seen when, uh, when nobody came even to Darlene's defense and stuff. They're soft. This team needs to get a scrapper on the team. I say we go out and we get, we get some tough guys on this team this offseason. And that way we start becoming intimidating to play against. We're not intimidating because we don't hit. We don't fight. <laughs> we don't do either, really. So if we're not going to do either of those, how are we supposed to be scared to play against? Because we do the transition? Come on, guys. 
There, you gotta, you, all aspects of the game have to be covered. Goaltending, aggression, sandpaper, same thing. You know, special teams. Our special teams this year, uh, look, our, our penalty kill did pretty okay so far this year. It's been okay. Pretty steady, right? It's going to float right around 80%, which is really good. It's good. I think we're around 78 right now or something. But our power play never got on track. It was not addressed. It wasn't addressed. I can't remember the last time I seen Tage on the power play blast one in. Really blast one in where it looked like the net was going to rip. Like, how many of those did we see last year? So Tage, in my opinion, guys, was not right all year. I know he's going to... He's a 30-goal man this year, but he wasn't right this season. You could tell he was playing with low confidence or possibly something, some sort of injury maybe in his hand or something. Something was going on with him this year. Dylan Cousins is probably the biggest shock of all this year. The most disappointing shock of the, of the season was Dylan Cousins, how bad he has been all season. And ineffective, call it what you want. He's been ineffective, lousy, bad instincts. Chasing the puck instead of taking out the player like he used to do. There's all sorts of things I see the guy not doing. That, and, and that is when a message gets stale with the coach, guys. And I honestly believe, and I think I'm right saying this, and I think, I think quite a few of you might agree, if we would have made a coaching change 30 or 40 games ago, we might be in the playoffs this year. And Adams doesn't have the balls as far as I'm concerned to fire his drinking buddy. Honestly, I, I think he has a man crush on Granado or something, guys, because it doesn't make sense to me that the coach is getting no response from the team, and it feels like they're winning games on their own without needing Granado even behind the bench to win them. How many times have we seen Granado leave guys on the ice too long this year? How many games have we seen this year, guys? We were not prepared to start the season. How often did we see this happen? Think about it. Way too often, right? Way too often. I got to do a video on that. I will get to it. I promise. I will get to that video. Yes, I know there was uh, some other videos that a few people asked to do. I will get on them. Behind the scenes studio. Plan to do that one eventually. But you know, I, I think that's what really killed our season. Really. What if Lukanen had a bad year? What if he would have had a bad year again this year? What if he would have been... The Lukanen of last year, this year. Because Lukanen took a step forward. I, I, I still... I don't see him as potential Vesna type goalie. I, I mean, he, he, he showed some flashes this year. But there was a lot, of, a lot of stops he made, guys, that weren't of the highest quality, danger chances, you want to call it what you want. There were some really good saves, but he's got a big body, he could slide over there quicker. But I've seen him let in a lot of floaters this year too. So his numbers represent what he did this year, which he sees about a 9-10 save percentage goalie, 9-15, right in that area, which is good. It's good. Is it number one material? I don't know. We'll see next year what he does. We'll see next year if this was a fluke. Fluke isn't the right word. If this was a career year or if this is going to be a pattern the rest of his career. We're going to find out next year with Luke and him. We'll find out more. I think next year we'll have Levi and Nets, and I think we can bounce off of Levi and Lucan in next year. I think that's we're fine for goalie as far as I'm concerned next year. You know, uh, there's a lot of, and we got to, there's people we got to move, guys. I, I've been saying it for three years now. Olofsson's got to go. He's got to go. I've been saying it since, you guys know, since he was a 28, 27 goal man. I've been saying he's got to go. Everybody's calling him Golofsson. Yeah, me, it's no Hitlofsson. You know, the guy doesn't know how to throw a body check if his life depended on it. No thanks. We got to get guys that can play all the game like a Bergeron on Boston. A guy that can score important goals and take his man out. Those are the type of players we want to get in Buffalo. We got to stop settling, guys. We got to put the bar higher as far as I'm concerned. So next year, we'll talk about this anyway soon. Sabres are done. Look, I'm not going to panic about it. They didn't deserve to get in this year. And guys have been saying all year, <laughs> they're probably going to finish with 82 points. They just got to go 1-1-1 one, one, and one now. <laughs> it's, the, it's a nightmare. 500 seasons are nightmares. Okay? They're nightmares. Because 
you know, get your hopes up at least six times during the year, five, six times, every like 12, 15 games, and it takes a nosedive again, you know? It's like, so we got to just, uh, we got to get a coach in here, guys, and I don't know what they're going to do. I don't care if they start good with Granado next year. This coach is not going to get us to the promised land. We need the coach that's going to. And the Lindy idea, I'm cool with it, of course. I, I, I hated when they fired Lindy. I remember, I remember um, Pagula saying his perception is Lindy's a good coach. And I'm like, oh my God, he's actually thinking he could fire this guy. You know? That's what I was thinking back then. I thought, Jesus, you know, it was unheard of. You don't fire Lindy. Guys brought us to the final four how many times? You don't fire this guy. And to the finals, you know? No. And then you got uh, Brewer Bay, who we've talked about. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 you've seen a team like the Blues, who wasn't a big hitting team, but come playoff time, they got mean, remember? In Boston, they got mean. So that's what we need. We need a coach that's going to bring out the mean of a team. I'm good with that. If I had my way, it'd be Quenville. He's the best coach in hockey. I know this whole crap happened in Chicago. I don't know why... Everything that's involved behind the scenes, I just can't say. I can't judge something. I can't judge on, on guessing, on hearsay. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't want to do that. But I can tell you that if the league lets him back, then it wasn't maybe as bad. Or maybe he's had it with the politics of the NHL. Who knows? Who knows what's going on in his head, right? We don't know. But we've got to bring another guy in. and It's got to be veteran. If we go with like Appert, it's a lost season next year. I don't care how good they play. They played great under Kruger in the beginning, guys, remember? And they crashed and burned. That's exactly what will happen with Appert. He'll just have another, we'll have a, another coach teaching not to hit, not to be physical. I don't want that, no. I want a coach that's going to hold them accountable for every aspect of the game when it comes to attitude and, and work ethic and, and physical play. All of it. I want all of it addressed. And we need a coach that's fearless that's going to do that. So we need a fearless coach, not a guy who's going to kiss ass to the Pagoulas. That's not the right way to go, in my opinion. So, all right, guys, done. Thanks for listening. I know I blabbed long enough. I'm going to get this up to you, and I'm going to get back up there and get on what I got to do. And I will see you as soon as I see you. I've got my deadline to meet. I, I will do the pregame. I'll see you guys uh, during the, the next, uh, next pregame tomorrow. And uh, that's it. So I'll see you. Uh, it is tomorrow, right? Yeah, guys, I'm so tired. <laughs> I just got to get up there. I'm going to be up to about 1, 2 in the morning. I'll see you guys in the pregame in the next, uh, next time I see you. See you then.